Welcome to the online training for the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program, or the IMMP. In this video, you will learn about monarch biology, migration, habitat needs, and conservation. Whether you're interested in participating in the program or not, you will learn valuable information about this fascinating species. The monarch scientific name is Danaeus plexippus, and the species evolved in North America. Occasionally, monarchs migrated off course, facilitated by the wind, and ended up across the Atlantic or even the Pacific. As of the mid-1800s, after humans both intentionally and unintentionally facilitated the spread of certain milkweed species, the monarch has been able to establish some breeding populations in the South Pacific Islands and Northern Atlantic. Monarchs undergo complete metamorphosis. In their life cycle, they go through four different life stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. This transformation takes about one month to complete. In order to complete this life cycle, one plant is essential. That plant is milkweed, and it is the only type of plant that monarchs can eat, though there are many species. There are more than 70 native Asclepius species in the United States and one honey vine that is not within the Asclepius genus, but it is within the milkweed family. Adults use milkweed as a nectar source and as a place to lay eggs, but also use nectar from a variety of other flowering species. In addition to this individual life cycle, monarchs as a species have a really interesting annual cycle. Starting in mid-August, monarchs from throughout the northern U.S. and southern Canada begin a southward migration to Mexico, reaching their overwintering sites in early November. These monarchs spend the winter in Oyamel fir forests of central Mexico. The high elevation of the forests provides a microclimate that is needed for monarchs to survive the winter. This overwintering habitat provides suitable temperature and moisture and also protects them from wind and rain. Within a year, there are four to five generations of monarchs and it's the final generation of the year that migrates south. This generation is physiologically different in that the monarch adults eclose or emerge from their pupae in a state called reproductive diapause. This means that they are not reproductively mature. This state of del delayed maturation is triggered by the shorter days, cooler nights, and aging of the milkweed that monarch larvae and pupae experience in late summer. During reproductive diapause, the development of reproductive organs is paused, which allows them to conserve energy for making the long migration south. These individuals live six to nine months through the winter and begin the northward migration in March. Breeding generations of adults only typically live two to six weeks. You'll notice that the North American population appears split on this map by the Rocky Mountains. There are two distinct populations of North American monarchs, one in the west and one in the east. These monarchs are not ge genetically distinct and monarch tagging has shown that there is some mixing that occurs between the populations. The Western migrant the Western population also migrates, but instead of flying to Mexico, they move primarily to the Pacific coast of California for the winter months. A much smaller, non-migratory population of monarchs resides year-round in southern Florida, though individuals from the eastern migratory population may join the South Florida residents each year. In early spring, the same monarchs that overwintered in Mexico or California begin the trek northward or inland from California. They reach southern U.S. or inland from the California coast where they lay eggs on available milkweeds. Then their offspring continues the journey to farther reaches of their breeding grounds across North America, extending into southern Canada. This graphic by Journey North illustrates the timing of the migration and the generations throughout the year. In the spring, the monarchs typically arrive to the northern U.S. in mid to late May. Journey North is a citizen science project that tracks the migration of monarchs and other migratory species through individuals reporting their observations online. 
As you might expect, monarchs have a variety of habitat needs throughout their life cycle. During the winter months, they need the perfect conditions at their overwintering grounds to protect them. Temperature, moisture, and cover or shelter. In Mexico, overwintering monarchs primarily use OML fir trees, and in the west, they may use eucalyptus trees, Monterey pines, and Monterey cypress. For all of these sites, it's important that the trees or forests are situated to create the right microclimate that will protect the adults from harsh winter events. Throughout the breeding season, milkweed remains a critical component of habitat. Developing larvae only eat milkweed, and adults only lay eggs on it. There are a few related species which attract monarchs to lay eggs on, on which the larvae cannot develop. These are species of swallowwort, which is an invasive plant found only in certain areas of North America. During the fall and spring migrations, nectar resources are extremely important fuel sources for adult monarchs. They continue to need nectar sources throughout the duration of the breeding season. Our best estimate of the monarch population comes from surveys conducted during their overwintering period. This is when they are easiest to count since they are clustered together in few areas rather than dispersed across the continent. Each year, surveyors in Mexico estimate the area of OML forest that is occupied by monarchs. This is more efficient and easier than counting individuals since millions of monarchs may be present in a small geographic area. In the West, surveyors do count or estimate individual monarchs since the overwintering groups are smaller. From this figure, you can see that the eastern monarch population has experienced an overall drastic decline during the last few decades. There is quite a lot of stochastic variation, or ups and downs, in the population from year to year. This is typical for insect populations and is thought to be most significantly influenced by weather conditions. If the conditions are optimal, the population may noticeably increase that year or it may significantly decline if conditions are poor, such as with severe drought conditions. Overall, both the eastern and western populations have experienced severe declines over the past few decades. Due to the drastic population declines, the species was petitioned for protection under the Endangered Species Act in 2014, and voluntary actions to prevent the need for listing began to rapidly grow. Research shows that in order to bring monarch populations back to a sustainable level, we need to take an all-hands-on-deck approach. This means that we need participation from all sectors in order to reach our goals. You might be wondering why the population has declined. Habitat loss has been implicated as a major factor contributing to the decline. In the breeding grounds, we have lost and continue to lose habitat to development and expansion and advancement of agricultural production. For instance, more than 99% of the original tall grass prairie in the Midwest has been lost. These lands once provided milkweed and nectar for monarchs and pollinators and are now being converted to lands that contribute very few resources to wildlife. Despite conservation efforts, we are continuing to lose grassland habitat today. Within agricultural lands, we have lost significant monarch habitat as well. Before the adoption of herbicide-tolerant or Roundup-ready corn and soybeans, milkweed used to grow readily within crop rows. With the transition from weed control primarily by mechanical means to the ability for broad-scale application of herbicides, milkweeds have virtually been eliminated from these lands that cover a large expanse of the Midwest. This area has historically been an important contributor to the monarch population. Studies from the early 2000s showed that the greatest percentage of monarchs overwintering in Mexico came from the Corn Belt region and that monarch production was higher in agricultural fields than surrounding areas. In the overwintering grounds, habitat is primarily lost due to legal and illegal logging, land conversion for farming, and climate change that negatively affects OML fur stands. As noted earlier, the microclimate is very important to protect monarchs from harsh winter weather, and the encroachment of logging and tree blowdowns from storms can alter the microclimate and increase monarch mortality. 
The Monarch Butterfly Biosphere Reserve is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and was established to protect the OML forests in which monarchs overwinter. These areas are protected by the Mexican government and require guides from the local communities to enter. Thus, these protections have largely prevented logging of the forests, although some illegal logging still occurs. There are a variety of other factors that threaten monarchs as well. These include the use of insecticides in production in residential areas, as well as climate change that indirectly harms monarchs by altering their habitat. For example, as we noted in the overwintering grounds, an increase in the severity of winter storms can cause major mortality. Monarchs also freeze at a higher temperature when they're wet, so winter storms can have a major impact them on, that, on them in that way. This image shows monarchs killed during the St. Patrick's Day storm, an extreme weather event in 2016. Monarchs also have a variety of natural predators. They sequester or store toxins called cardenolides from eating milkweed, which makes them distasteful to many potential predators and serves as a natural defense. Many invertebrates are not affected by these toxins, so monarchs are often consumed by spiders, stink bugs, parasitoids, wasps, and flies. Additionally, there are two bird species in Mexico that prey on overwintering monarchs by either avoiding or tolerating the toxins. Collisions with vehicles are also a known cause of mortality, particularly during the fall migration. Wider roads, faster traffic, and increased mowing frequency can increase butterfly mortality, but further research would be beneficial in order to more fully understand how to mitigate or avoid vehicle collisions. A literature review by the Xerces Society for Invertebrate Conservation suggests that the benefits of habitat along roadways outweigh the costs. Another naturally occurring threat is Ophryocystis electroscura, a protozoan parasite that infects monarchs. Monarchs infected with OE do not always show symptoms, and the parasite is not usually fatal. It is, so, it is associated with a decreased fitness and lifespan for adults. At higher levels of infection, adults may fail to emerge completely from their pupil casing and die. OE spores are primarily spread from parent to offspring during egg laying, but can also accumulate on milkweed and can thereby infect other monarch larvae that may be consuming the plant. OE can transfer between adults and from adult to larvae, but does not spread from larva to larva. The year-round presence of tropical milkweed, or Asclepias curasavica, in the south has been implicated in the increased transmission and prevalence of this disease. This is because while other species typically go dormant during the winter months, tropical milkweed is able to persist year-round and the parasite spores accumulate on the plant leaves and more rapidly spread throughout the winter breeding population. For the eastern population, we're striving for an average population size of six hectares consistently at the Mexico overwintering locations. The Western population is developing goals for a sustainable population size currently. In order to achieve our goals for the Eastern population, scientists estimate that we need 1.3 to 1.8 billion additional milkweed stems embedded in high quality pollinator habitat. You may notice that the population did reach that size in 2019. This does not mean that our work is done. The goal is to have an average population size of six hectares in the long term since there is so much variation from year to year. With this size, scientists expect that the population we would be able to recover from extreme weather events or other disruptions and still maintain the migratory phenomenon. The average population size in the 90s and early 2000s was around six hectares, but you can see that in the last 10 years, the average size is almost half of that. 